Ashley, what is our next main topic today? Next one is from Matthew. Hey, John, big fan, and I've been following you since the AMC days. After the astonishing, demolished, domestic, and worldwide box office from Endgame, what also shocks me is the amount of revenue it created for Captain Marvel. Your thoughts on Captain Marvel coming in second for this weekend's box office? Thanks, guys, and keep bringing the great content. It is crazy when you think about it. Captain Marvel was at the number six spot a couple of weeks ago. Last weekend, it jumped back up into the top five. And then this past weekend, it jumped up to number two. We have Marvel MCU films right now in the number one and number two spots of the box office. Huge disparity. One made 357, one made eight. But still, you have the number one and the number two. But it actually goes beyond even that, Rob. Right now, we have three comic book films in the top five spots at the box office. This has never happened happened before right now at number five we got shazam which is still holding in there again we have captain marvel in the number two spot it's already part of the billion dollar club and we got avengers endgame which by the way is now the number 17 all-time box office film after five days so just wrap your head around that rob you know i've i've told this story a couple times but i still remember back in the early days when me and schnepp were working together we, we were standing at the AMC Burbank 16 and we we're, were just talking about stuff and we we're like, oh my God, do you know that we are going to get three comic book movies this year? Like this is coming out of an era where we used to have to wait a year for a comic book movie or two I years know. for just one. And we were saying, do you know, we're getting three comic book movies this year. Crazy. And now in just a short hop, skip and a jump from that time period to now. We've got three comic book movies in the top five at the box office at the same time. Four in theaters, by the way, Hellboy took a massive beating, took a 91% drop in its just its third weekend, not doing well. That's gonna end up losing them an awful lot of money, but still, three films in the top five. Rob, put this into historical context for us as far as, because there, there may be some 18 year olds watching this, like, yeah, we always get lots of comic book movies in here. It has not been like that for very long. Right? No. It hasn't been like that for very long at all, much less a film, a co the, the ultimate comic book movie, the ultimate comic book crossover, a movie that 10 years ago nobody would have ever even believed could have existed, opened to a billion two worldwide. I mean, this is so different. This is such a, it's a massive sea change. But, you know, I think it really speaks to a generational shift because people grew up with these these characters starting you know in the 90s a lot of younger fans became fans with it was a confluence of things like animation video games and then the beginning remember when x-men one came out that was 2000 that was 19 years ago so let's say you're a kid who's like six you know you're 25 years old now so a whole generation has built up to to uh end game and it's a new world that we live in. You know, curmudgeons like myself can lament the fact that, oh, Endgame took over an entire movie theater worth of screens. But I think it's great. I, I don't think it's pushing out other movies. I think it speaks to where the culture is right now. And it, it speaks to a generation that grew up with all of this great entertainment we have. And this is an event for them. This is a, we haven't seen a cultural event like this before. And I think it's terrific, but it ain't it ain't something that was usual love this time that we're in now kids because it wasn't always here yeah and again this whole thing that the end game is just part of the story and right. that's just part of it the fact that we've got another billion dollar film sitting at the number two spot we've got thankfully a profitable film for dc and, and a, another win in a row for dc with with shazam all in the top five. It is absolutely nuts and crazy. Now we're going to have to wait and see, is there a hangover? Is there a hangover? Because now we're going to be coming out of Endgame, all this kind of stuff. we got Spider-Man Far From Home coming. I called that Spider-Man Far From Home would join the Billion Dollar Club. Will it still? Will there be a little bit of fatigue? Not overall comic book movie fatigue, but just for a, for a moment. Does, is, is the audience going to feel like they need to take a breath? Is there going to be a hangover? Do you still think that in lieu of we got three comic book films in the top five right now, two billion dollar films in there right now, one's going to hit the two billion dollar mark here shortly, huge end game, blah, blah, blah. Do you think there might be a little bit of a period of a hangover by the time Spider-Man Far From Home hits? No, 
<laughs> just I, 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 look, I think people, this is a wave that people are going to ride in. And what, what Spider-Man is, is, it's dessert. Spider-Man is Endgame's dessert. And especially if they deal with the fact, and now I'm convinced they will, that there's all these people talking about, well, Make sure Peter, you don't get into spoilers. Well, no, but that, okay. that for, we'll have, about in terms of Endgame? Yeah, make sure you don't reveal anything. Oh, well, okay. Well, there's, you know, Peter Parker, the situation after we, we know he was snapped in Infinity War, and now they're making another movie about him. And I think how they're going to deal with that is going to be interesting, and people are going to want to know. I want to know. My excitement for Spider-Man went up after I saw Endgame. And I think a lot of people's will, because there's questions, and, and, and it makes it, it's part of the story. And I want to know the answers, and I can't wait. And I think most people, who doesn't love, you go see Endgame, uh, <clears throat> let's just say when characters are in the movie, there's a there's a warm, vibrate feeling that comes through the the theater. And, and I, I think people are going to want to capture that with Spider-Man Far From Home. I just I just don't know if the average audience is well. I know the, us hardcore ones, I'm still going to stick to my prediction that it'll join the Billion Dollar Club. Um, but it will be interesting to see what kind of after effect there is. Because remember, we saw Ant-Man and the Wasp come out just two months after Infinity War. It did better than the first Ant-Man, but some might have thought that with the you know, the momentum of Infinity War, that maybe Ant-Man could have made $800, $900 million. Maybe flirt with a billion, there were some conversations. It didn't do that. It made $600 and something million, dollars, which is fine. So it'll be interesting to see. But remember, Spider-Man Spider Homecoming... Made eight hundred million dollars its first time out. Huge reception. Loved him in Infinity War. Let's see what happens as we roll out of that. 